All right, today I'm excited to show you VibeCoder, a VS Code extension designed explicitly to make vibe coding easier in AI-enabled IDEs such as WindSurf or Cursor. Today I'll use WindSurf in this demo, but this works well in Cursor as well. And right now, we'll start from the beginning. I have a, I'm going to open a folder. Let's create a new one. And we'll get going. So the way you install it in WindSurf will be a little bit different since they don't use the VS Code Marketplace. They use OpenVSX. We're working on getting it listed there, but for now, you'll need to go and grab the VSIX file from the GitHub repo and download that. And then you click the three buttons and hit install. Grab that. And now the extension's installed. And so the way you activate it is just Command-Shift-V. And this will open the panel. And what you'll see here is you have two modes, Vibe mode and Code mode. Vibe has a integrated AI agent powered by DeepGram that the idea is it will let you brainstorm ideas for your project, bounce questions off it, and then once you have a long conversation about your idea and kind of hammer it out, collaborate on it, then you can ask it to create a project spec. So the project spec will then help you as you switch to code mode and work with Cascade. It'll help keep Cascade and uh, Composer and Cursor on track as you develop the project and continue to vibe code. So we'll switch over here. I don't really know what I'm building, uh, but I'd like to build a project and I need your help brainstorming. What interests you the most, such as web development, mobile apps, or maybe something else? Uh, I actually want to build a browser-based game about transformer models where it's like a platformer somehow. So you can kind of have fun while also learning how transformers work and how outputs change and such. That's a fascinating concept. What kind of game point mechanics do you envision for Ms. Platformer? I don't really know. I haven't thought about that. What do you think? What if players could collect components to transform their character, affecting abilities and appearance as they progress? Would that enhance the learning experience? Well, how does that show like what a transformer model do does? Great question. The collection mechanics could represent different parts of a transformer model like attention heads or layers. How do you feel about integrating puzzles that require players to utilize these components to advance or solve challenges? Yeah, that's a good idea. What types of puzzles could effectively represent the concepts of a transformer model in a way that's engaging for players? I'm kind of stumped, what do you think? How about puzzles that require players to strategically transform inputs sure. into outputs? Yeah, that sounds good. How do you envision the visual style and overall theme of your game to support the educational aspect while remaining fun and engaging? I haven't, haven't really thought about that. I, kind of the classic platformer aesthetic, probably. That sounds solid. How might you incorporate elements that visually represent the Transformer concepts within that classic platformer aesthetic? <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll rely on you for that. What if you used vibrant colors and animations that change based on the player's transformations, maybe Ooh, even yeah, including yeah. I like that. That's a good idea. What would you like to discuss next in your game development process? Yeah, I think that's good. You can just take that and why don't you go ahead and make a project spec. Let me work on that. Stand by. I have generated and saved the project specification for your game concept. What would you like to do next? All right, you can see it created, based on the conversation we just had, it created a project spec that we can then use now as we switch to code mode and start actually creating this project. And so what I'll start doing is I'll show off the dictation feature, but just a quick note is because that uh, is calling out to a specific function call to generate this project spec, it could take a little bit of time, so just uh, be patient and this will appear. Uh, I fast forwarded in this video just to save everyone watching it some time. And I'll also do that for using the cascade mode uh, while the LLM is generating just to, again, save everyone time while who's watching this. All right, so what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and switch to this. And what you'll see here is we have two different prompts. You can see what these prompts are if you open settings and go to prompts and you can get a preview of it. This default prompt is gonna add a little bit more to your whatever you say based on what you're saying in the context of your command. I like to create a new prompt 
once you click create new prompt, you'll get this command palette prompt that will pop up and then you can either modify or create new. So let's create new. I'm going to call it minimal. That'll open this window. And I'll say this. So here's the prompt I'm going to use. So now that I have that, I'm just going to save it and it'll now appear here. And so now we can start coding. So the other thing you'll need to do is add your OpenAI API key. You can see it's here. If it if you haven't entered it yet, it'll prompt you. Testing. So in Windsurf, if it hangs up on you here, that means you need to go enter your OpenAI API key. In Cursor and in VS Code, it'll prompt you, but because they changed some of the way the command palette works in Windsurf, I think that's causing a bug here. So you just hit Settings, API key, paste it, hit Save, and now try this again. So Testing, testing. There you go. Okay, so you're off to the races with Windsurf. So now, let's try this again. I want you to take a look at the project spec and develop a step-by-step -step implementation plan for it. Uh, don't code yet, just lay out the plan for implementing it. And then we'll paste it right in there. And we're good to go in Windsurf. All right, so this is the project uh, plan, implementation plan it came up with. So I liked it, looked over it. So we'll go ahead and tell it to, to start. Go ahead and start implementing phase one, and if you have any questions, just make sure to ask me. Now you notice the dictation is automatically copied to the clipboard once it's rewritten, and just paste it in there. All right, you can see I skipped a bunch of time because it was generating. It created all these files and gave us a good start, so now we're going to go ahead and proceed. So we will switch back. All right, this looks good. Where do we stand versus the plan? Don't code yet, just tell me how we're looking. Okay, go ahead and complete phase one, please. And then just tell me how I can test it on my local host. All right, it made it pretty far, so next. All right, so it made it pretty far, created a bunch of more files, so let's see where it's at today, or right now. Okay, so where are you at as far as our implementation goes? What's left? What still needs to happen, and can I test it yet? So we still have to make make some new stuff. Go ahead and uh, yeah, create all those assets that we need so we can actually test this thing. little windsurf bug here. Let's try that. No. Okay, hitting the error with cascade. Paste our prompt again. There we go. I don't know what that was with Cascade, but apparently if that happens, closing Cascade and opening it up again helps. So now it's creating the player asset or placeholder assets. Okay, so now we've gotten 
to this point where we are ready to test it. So we're going to test it, see what happens. Okay, so that's a problem. So we'll tell it about it. Looks like there was an error it said it popped up when I opened the client that said it was unable to decode audio data, the audio key data was missing or something. All right, here we go. All right, so a couple things didn't work, but you can see we made good progress. Uh, it created audio files, it did all that stuff, and I didn't have to type a single thing into the box here. So that's the, the benefit of Vibe Coder. You can just feel the vibes. I didn't even know what I was doing. So I switched to the agent and the agent helped me think about what to build and help me generate that project spec. And then switching to code mode made it really easy to get dictation into the tool. Total time was about 30 minutes to get to that point of the first test and seeing what I was able to do. Now a reminder that this tool works in both cursor and windsurf. I typically use cursor. So apologize for any windsurf peculiarities on my part from user error. Now, remember, this is a first cut MVP at what we think the future will look like. There are lots of improvements to be made, and we'd love to hear from you as far as how you think we can improve this, such as adding more capability to the agent, adding the ability to load context into the agent into the code mode here. And the dream would be to eventually work with Windsurf and Cursor to get the dictation and the rewrite directly into the composer box. So all you have to do is hit enter uh, or adding voice mode entirely to Cascade or composer and just talking directly to them uh, but lots of lots of great ideas out there and we'd love to hear them there will be more updates to the extension so keep an eye on it make sure it's updated uh, and if you have issues please let us know about those too so we can resolve them i hope you enjoyed this and looking forward to seeing how you all use vibe coder to vibe code